Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to another episode of Pan the Organizer. So the biggest car related show in the world happened in Las Vegas this past week. I'm talking about the SEMA show 2023. So I'm filming this today right after the show. Uh, we're Sunday, November 5th, 2023. And there were a lot of innovations, new product releases, just like every year, but also a few, um, well, key absent companies that were not there. Uh, I'll talk about that in the video and also um, there seems to have been kind of a flat line as far as innovation goes uh, in some of the categories. I'll be giving you my thoughts on that too. Um, by the way, I was not physically present at SEMA this year. I just had too much on the plate. Um, I went on a trip to Greece with my uh, family and, uh, and my girlfriend and my brother and so with my parents as well. So we had a great time, but uh, well, I needed some much time off because uh, yeah, producing videos is very, very, very hard. It takes a lot of time and energy. And so when I I came back uh, in October. I had a lot of things to uh, catch up on and produce all these cool videos for you guys. However, I spent many, many hours uh, looking around, seeing all the product reveals, all the brands' videos. Of course, I have a lot of insides in the industry because um, I can talk to those companies directly and get the, uh, well, all the crucial information. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to share uh, what I believe to be some of the key highlights from a few of the brands, uh, but I want your participation. If there's anything that I didn't talk about in this video that you guys want to see uh, me discuss in future videos, well, let me know. Drop a comment in the comment section uh, and also of the stuff I'll be talking about. I want your input so I can produce future videos. What are the things that you're looking most forward to me uh, testing and reviewing, doing it the pan, the organizer style? You know, you guys know uh, you guys trust my input and opinion at this point. You have made this one of the biggest car detailing channels on YouTube and I have you to thank for as we're quickly approaching 1 million subscribers uh, at the time of this video. It's absolutely bonkers, over 125 million views. Uh, and again, I have you guys to thank for. Thanks for the support that you've shown through the years. Um, it's a little over seven years now that I'm producing these videos. I've never skipped a single week of uploads. I produce videos every Wednesdays and Saturdays, as you guys know, at 9 a.m. Eastern time. And so, yeah, today we're going to go over all the new stuff, uh, at least the things that jumped out to me, because there is, of course, brands sometimes uh, reveal 10, 20 new products uh, or tools or equipment. I'm just highlighting the ones I think uh, that are more attention grabbing, should I say. And again, let me know uh, which ones you preferred for me to test in future videos. And if there's anything that I might have missed, uh, let me know, drop a comment. By the way, I'll leave links to all the tools, products, and equipment that I talk about in the description under the video for you guys to check all of those out. So all you have to do is sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. So I have pages and pages of notes uh, here in front of me, thankfully, because it's impossible to remember all of that by heart. All right, let's start. Uh, first and foremost, Rupez, they released or unveiled their new HLR15 and HLR21 polishers. These are battery powered, so they're cordless. Um, they're using 18 volt, five amp hour lithium ion batteries. And uh, I think it's going to be, uh, well, what we really, really wanted for a long time. Many other brands have cordless polishers now, mainly from overseas. Um, uh, some of them are quite cheap in uh, build quality, but there were a few good ones. If I look at my flex on my wall right now in my Milwaukee, I have two of those cordless polishers. Uh, I have a few Rupes, but the smaller ones, so the Ibra Nano and also the HLR75, which I released, I think, if I remember last year. Uh, so those are fantastic. But now we were wanting them to produce the full-fledged 15 millimeter orbit and 21 millimeter orbit. So the replacement of the um, uh, LHR Mark III and LHR um, 15 and 21 polishers, the corded versions. So I have the LHR uh, 15 Mark III on my wall as well. So that has been a staple in the industry for so many years. They're very good, very low on noise, very low on vibration. Uh, ergonomics are amazing and they're just workhorses, right? Uh, so now they release these new polishers. Now the big thing is that they're fully redesigned from the ground up. Uh, one of their representatives said that the only thing that's um, left from their previous version, I think, is the trigger and the speed control. That's pretty much it. So all the rest is totally brand new. Again, they had to work on it for many, many years of development to get to this point. Um, I think they finalized, they said, the design of the HLR21, so the 21 millimeter orbit, and they're still tweaking 
the 15 millimeter uh, a bit. They're planning on releasing on January 2024. Um, it's going to come starting as a kit at 900 US dollars for the kit, which will include the polisher, a dual charger, two batteries, uh, a few polishes and new pads because they're also releasing uh, a new pad. They call it, it's a turquoise color. You're going to see that in many of their videos. It's their intermediate foam pad. So it's between uh, the blue cutting foam pad that they have and the yellow polishing pad. So it's somewhere in between. So a bit less aggressive than the blue, uh, but not as soft as the uh, yellow finishing uh, polishing pad that they have. So that'll be quite interesting. And uh, so what about the new polishers? They significantly cut down in weight because usually, right, you can take any polisher in your lineup, slap on a battery and you call it a cordless polisher. Uh, but as we all know, it can like change the balance obviously because you're adding more weight in the backs or the ergonomics if you didn't think about that won't be as great and it also adds a lot of weight uh, so in this case because they designed it from the ground up they were able to uh, do a lot of uh, engineering choices to save on weight so if i look at the stats for the uh, hlr uh, 15 we're talking about 3.8 pounds or 1.75 kilos and for the hlr 21 4.3 pounds or 1.95 kilos so that's the weight without battery super lightweight all the people who have tested it at the booth uh, saw how just lightweight it was uh, what are we talking about um, continuous runtime so they promise 40 minutes of continuous work time or runtime under load so that is big right because uh, you're applying a bit of pressure and you're actually working so they tested the real world use to 40 minutes in actuality they said in their training centers uh, they got a little more than that but they like to under promise and over deliver and for the recharge cycle you're looking at 50 to 55 minutes to a full charge with the battery uh, but again in their um, uh, in their Bigfoot Academy in the real world they managed to get zero to 75 percent charge in just 22 minutes so uh, basically you'll be able to run all day when one battery is getting close uh, to being out you can just switch continue charging that and continue using so 40 minutes of continuous runtime under load that is pretty pretty good for a cordless polisher um, what else can we say so the dual battery charger, it intelligently prior prioritizes the highest voltage battery. So that way you're sure to always have the battery to uh, charge the quickest, the one that has the most charge already. So that's the one it prioritizes to charge. So you're always going to have no issues with charging. Uh, you're getting reduced noise levels and vibrations thanks to the advanced polymer gears. Yes, you heard that right. They're not using metal gears anymore, so advanced polymer. Um, and also they have a polymer housing that looks like carbon fiber. So I thought it might have been raw carbon fiber, but it's not. It's a polymer uh, housing, but it still looks like carbon fiber. So all that together really leads to cutting down on that weight. Uh, less vibrations, if you can believe that. It was already a very good machine for ergonomics and very good to use. They also have some cool innovation. I mean, it makes the tool look cool, but there's a reason behind it. There's an LED strip that runs the length of the polisher itself. And that, well, again, not only looks cool to have that LED lighting, it makes it look modern. The, the aesthetics, by the way, of the polisher, top-notch. Great work by the Rupes team in Italy. Um, they're going to start off with production, by the way, in Italy, and it'll eventually move as well. North America, they build the North American polishers in USA, so they're going to start building that later on, probably in the first quarter of 2024. Um, but yeah, so that LED light that's on the side of the ha um, of the polisher itself has two functions. So if you're forcing too much, if you're applying too much load on the polisher, it will blink uh, very quickly to let you know that you're forcing the machine and for you to back off a bit on the pressure, let the machine do the work right. We all know that, don't apply uh, too much force. And it's gonna have a slow blinking LED when it's getting close uh, for the battery to be uh, down in charge. So when you have a low battery level, it's gonna have a slow blinking. So very smart that they incorporated that that uh, enter their design. I'm really looking forward to trying that. The HLR15 uh, will have a 5-inch backing plate and the HLR21 uh, will have a 6-inch backing plate. Um, so just like they had before with the LHR15 Mark III or LHR15 Mark 21. So 5-inch backing plate on the 15 model and a 6-inch backing plate uh, on the 21 model. So uh, yeah, what do you guys think? Uh, I'm going to be pretty excited. Hopefully, I'm going to be able to test that as soon as they're released. I'm going to order mine uh, as quickly as possible. So look for future testing. Uh, I really like the cordless polishers because, uh, sorry about that, I have uh, allergies. I'm, we did a bit of work. There's a, a little dust too much 
uh, in the garage. So uh, yeah, I'm allergic to dust, believe it or not. Fish as well and a bunch of other stuff. But anyways, uh, I digress. So the next up, Meguiar's. They had um, a few different new product releases like they always do at SEMA. Uh, some of them a bit more interesting than others, but let's go over the uh, the highlights. So first of all, they have the uh, ultimate ceramic coating in their ultimate line. They say it's a ceramic coating for durable protection. It's going to increase gloss and slickness. It's supposed to have extreme water beating action. Um, but what caught my attention, is they say it conceals minor paint defects. So it's an eight ounce bottle. It's a spray form and conceals minor defects. Now, are they fillers in the formula or are they just referring to the fact that when you're applying some protection on the surface, it's going to perhaps fill in a bit of the minor cavities from swirls and scratches in the clear coat and make it appear as you're masking the defects? I don't know. That'll be interesting. If anyone has some details, let us know in the comment section. Uh, I find that particular. So it's safe on painted surfaces, plastics, decals, PPF and wheels, no mention for use on glass. Uh, it is not recommended for matte or satin finishes. And the only thing they say about durability is that it's beyond wax. So no claims as far as months or as far as durability to washes uh, or years. We don't know at this point. Uh, so I guess time will tell. Uh, the other product that they released is the ceramic wash and wax. Now, this is a shampoo infused with um, uh, some ceramic their, they call it their hybrid ceramic wax technology protection. So I'm glad that they updated that because their previous version in that orange bottle I had tested, I wasn't fond of that. If you remember that video and many of you guys as well, it was a bit too complicated. You had to mix the SiO2 portion with the shampoo when you were ready to use. The dosage wasn't right. You absolutely had to use their own specific mitt for that with a different kind of microfiber backing in the back to kind of agitate it on the surface. And it, it was just not their best thing. So hopefully they corrected that with this one. Um, and so they say you can use it in a bucket or a foam cannon, one to six ratio in the foam cannon and two ounces per gallon uh, of water in the bucket. So you're using quite a bit. If you're using four gallons of water, uh, you're looking at eight ounces of the product. So yeah, it's a big size. Hopefully they stay good on cost, uh, but it's safe on glossy and matte surfaces, according to them. So that'll be interesting. Uh, by the way, you can order all, you can pre-order all the Meguiar stuff right now. Uh, again, links to all this stuff will be in the description under the video. Quick disclaimer, by the way, this is not a sponsored video. Nobody paid for this video. I'm just sharing my thoughts and opinions on the new stuff that's released at SEMA. Uh, so Meguiar's, they released also in their Ultimate line, the Ultimate Headline Restoration Kit. Uh, it comes with sanding discs, sealing wipes, but this one, they promise 18 months of durability. So again, time will tell. Uh, they also have a new Ultimate Glass Cleaner and Repellent. A lot of brands this year, as you'll see in this video, uh, released glass cleaners that also have repellency in them. Uh, I tend to prefer pure glass cleaners and control what product I'm adding uh, on top afterwards. Or if I have a glass coating, for example, already, uh, I don't need a product that has both in them. But uh, you guys, let me know. Are you looking forward to products that have the two-in-one to clean and to protect? for your glass surfaces. I'm curious. Uh, again, in the... Um, oh, now we're talking about all surface interior cleaner. So in the regular line, uh, it basically, it's like a quick interior cleaner. So it doesn't have any protection properties. It's going to remove dirt, dust, grime, fingerprints from vinyl, uh, leather surfaces, rubber and plastics. It has no gloss or shine. So that OEM matte appearance, it's, it's supposed to even remove stains from carpets and upholstery. So kind of one product cleans it all for your interior. And if you want to add any protection afterwards, uh, you can follow up with what they recommend, which is their Meguiar's ultimate protectant for that UV protection and all that kind of stuff. Uh, another coating that they unveiled this year, uh, I'm wondering why, I'm curious, but it, anyways, it's called the Professional Beyond Ceramic Paint Coating uh, uh, Internal Code M888. So this is supposed to be some new advanced professional technology. It's not something that they had in their lineup before. So to my knowledge, from what I understand, this is something they've been working on with multiple, multiple chemists for like five or six years at this point. It's entirely new technology uh, compared to their traditional SiO2 uh, ceramic-based product. So this is something different uh, as this new coating has apparently 100% actives, take that for what it is, uh, and it has no flashing off carriers. It also has self-leveling properties. That's always nice to see uh, in a coating. It works on paint, glass, trim, PPF, wheels, decal, all that stuff. Uh, it's not meant for satin or matte finishes. 
uh, however. And again, they say multi-year durability. So we don't know how many years. There's no official claims on their part. Um, I like that brands are moving away actually from claiming years because it's getting ridiculous at this point. I mean, we're seeing seven years, nine years, 10 years, lifetime. It doesn't make any sense anymore because in the real world, we all know there are many variables that affect durability. So the prep, the application, uh, the conditions your car is exposed to, the weather where you live, uh, is it a daily driver or a garage kept car? Is it outside in the elements all day or kept in a garage? How much mileage you do in a year? What kind of maintenance you make? All those real world factors deeply impact uh, a product. So uh, everybody's gonna get different um, durability on the same exact product, depending again on all those factors. So I like to test a vehicle in my conditions, in real world conditions and scenarios to see how long it lasts for me. So in this case, uh, we don't know exactly how long, but they promise multi-year. Uh, but what I do like is they say that it's based on prep, installation, and maintenance. And they're basing that on a, a water contact angle measurement with proper maintenance and ceramic-based boosting spray. So they do recommend that every now and then uh, you apply one of their boosters, like their uh, uh, hybrid ceramic detailer, that green bottle. So you can use that every week as a uh, drying aid or as a quick detail spray. Basically maintain your product and it should last many years. So I'll be curious to see how well that does because their previous, it was their hybrid paint coating spray. So they were promising 12 months if I remember with that one and I actually got more in the end. Uh, so a few more months of durability out of it in real world conditions. So I think they under promised and over delivered. That doesn't happen very often, uh, but that was quite good. Other than a few things, it was super slick, but for me, it didn't really boost the gloss levels back in that day. I know some of you guys said that it did well on that end for you, um, but again, Again, that's why it's important for you guys to test the product and see what you guys like and prefer. Um, so what do you think? Uh, they released a lot of new products, Meguiar's. They've been around for so long. They're a staple in the industry and they did quite well. Now, one of their main competitors, uh, Turtle Wax in the consumer space was not there this year. So unfortunately, they were not present. Um, there's a lot of companies that pulled out. If I look uh, in the consumer world as well, Chemical Guys um, for I think a second year in a row was not present. Um, even CarPro, CarPro was not at the show. So they're professional grade, uh, but they weren't at the show. A few years now, they, had, they haven't been there. However, they did do some unveilings during SEMA and I'll talk about those in the video because I think some of them are very, very important. So uh, yeah, some key uh, marquee, uh, people that were absent, Turtle Wax and Chemical Guys, that goes to ask the question, um, because SEMA is only open to professionals from the industry, or people in the industry. Well, consumers uh, like you guys are not able to attend the show, except last year, I think they had uh, one or two hours at the end end on the very last day, but it was pandemonium for people trying to get in. But basically the rest of the days, uh, the public cannot attend. And for me, these are products that are mainly used by the public. Yes, there are professionals, but professional detailers are a very small percentage of the actual population. And the majority of the sales, especially from consumer grade brands, uh, come from uh, the public. And if you guys aren't able to attend, it's kind of tough so I wish they opened the doors to people from the public because it is something amazing to behold. Uh, it's miles and miles and miles of walking. It's one convention hall after the other. So the North Hall, so South Hall, Central Hall, West, East, you name it. It's so big. Uh, yeah, it's pretty huge and it's, it's a lot of fun but it's hectic because there's people everywhere, super packed. Um, but it's one of the most important ones in the world as far as the automotive industry is concerned because there's not only detailing products, right? There's anything from uh, wheels, car mods, uh, seats, performance exhausts, anything you can think of that's related closely or loosely to cars you will see at the uh, SEMA show in Las Vegas. So if you have the opportunity to go once in your life, uh, please do, it is worthwhile. So let's get back to the topic. Uh, third, we have CarPro. So yes, one of my favorite car detailing brands, you guys know. So they unveiled a few stuff, uh, including a new uh, leather kit that they call the Skin Care Kit. It comes uh, with an applicator, a leather brush, uh, it's gonna have a leather cleaner and now they have a leather conditioner slash protectant. Uh, I don't know why they added conditioner in there because we know that the top coat of modern leather is sealed with a polyurethane clear top layer that conditioners usually don't penetrate. Uh, that's what I understand from talking about uh, that with leather experts in the industry from Colorlock, Geist and all that kind of stuff. 
So I'd be curious to know what CarPro's take is on that, but it'll be interesting to see. Uh, they also have a new Clarify Phobic spray. So again, a glass cleaner with hydrophobic properties in it. So a bit of protection in there. Um, so Clarify, as you guys know, is one of my favorite glass cleaners for the automotive use. And so now they have this new version called Clarify Phobic. So that'll be interesting. Uh, but there are two main reveals. The ones that I'm most excited about is a much needed update to their consumer grade C-Quartz UK 3 3.0 ceramic coating. I think that was released circa 2018 at this point. I had uh, done a review video on my channel when it was initially released. And so that's been around for like five years plus at this point. And it was a two year coating, um, two layers recommended. And so a lot of things have evolved since. Many, many brands now have been able to produce coatings with one layer systems uh, with three, five plus years of durability uh, and less curing time needed. So it was interesting to see what they released. And it's their new D Quartz Go coating. So it's their Nano Diamond Quartz Fusion coating. So let's call it DQ Go. So they had released last year uh, the uh, DQ uh, C Quartz Nano Diamond diamond coating professional. So that was only the certified professionals. The public couldn't buy it. And now they have this new um, D Quartz Go Nano Diamond Quartz Fusion Coating. Again, wow, that's a mouthful. Let's call it DQ Go, as I said. So that's for the public. Anybody can purchase that one. They say it's going to have exceptional hardness uh, to reduce surface marring or abrasion resistance. So that's the diamond portion or the nano diamonds that they're using in there. So I don't think it's necessarily going to resist to crazy scratches like key scratches or those heavy swirls and scratches or certainly not uh, impacts from stone chips. Uh, but my understanding is abrasion, abrasion resistance. So the light marring you get from hand washing your vehicle and towel drying your vehicle for those who use a microfiber towel to dry. We all know that light friction can induce some marring over time, especially the more you wash your vehicle. So that's going to supposed to resist that. I'll be very curious to see how it does in the real world. World. Um, what is the formula? So they say it has an enhanced smoothness or slickness, and it's a formula based on fluoropolymers. We've seen a bit of that technology used over at Gion as well. So it's going to be great to see how that works. They say that coating is going to work obviously on painted surfaces, but it works on metal as well. Uh, highly hydrophobic. Of course, it's going to have UV and chemical resistance. Uh, and the uh, they say it utilizes functionalized detonation nano diamond powder another mouthful. Uh, and one layer is enough. Yes, you can stack a second layer if you want, but again, one layer is enough. I love that brands are moving on to one layer systems. Uh, however, they mentioned you have to keep it out of the elements for 48 hours. Hmm. So curing time went up from 24 to 48 hours. Um, that Those are the instructions I saw on CarPro US's website. Um, so Corey, if that is a mistake, please let us know. But 48 hours without exposing to water or rain, that might be tough for some of you guys out there who don't necessarily have a garage. Um, so yeah, I'll be curious to see how it does in real life. But like any CarPro coating, I'm sure it is fantastic. Uh, if you noticed as well this year, there was a trend that there was practically no graphene product revealed. So we all know top tier brands like CarPro, G-Technic, um, and um, Gion have not had any graphene coatings in their lineup yet. I think they're actually stirring away from it because the initial promises from the brands that had released graphene coatings were that this was supposed to be a magical formulation that helps to prevent water spots by either lowering surface temperatures or helping to evacuate the water quicker. So you're, hence you're getting less chances of water spotting. Uh, but that was what we did not know in the beginning is that the majority, well, all of them, to my knowledge, are using actually a ceramic coating base with just some reduced graphene oxide infused into the mix. So RGO, not pure graphene. Nobody has been able to crack the code for using pure graphene in a coating as of this moment uh, in November 2023. So are graphene coatings good? Yeah, but I mean, they're from what we noticed after we had the time to test, right? Because when some new technologies are revealed, you get excited, but then you do some real world testing and you readjust your expectations. And what we notice is they're not necessarily better than ceramic coatings because the base is a ceramic coating with just some reduced graphene oxide infused into them. So that initial craze seems to have faded away uh, for graphene. There are still brands that use it for some good reasons. Obviously, they'll, they let you know why they infuse the graphene in there. 
But uh, are they better than ceramic coatings? No. Are they worse? No. I think if you have, if you do see some differences, it might be more to the overall formulation rather than the reduced graphene oxide being infused. But that's just my opinion and my take on it. For me, it's just always pick a coating from a reliable brand, regardless if it's nano diamond infused, if it's uh, ceramic, if it's graphene. Overall, it shouldn't really matter. Take a, a product from a brand that you trust and love, use it, and you should be good. And um, yeah, give us some feedback on durability. So the CarPro D Quartz Go, that Nino Diamond, diamond uh, Quartz Fusion Coating seems very interesting. No durability claims. So the previous C Quartz UK 3.0, they were claiming up to two years of protection on this new version. No off official claims from CarPro yet. So we'll see how long it lasts in the real world and what the feedback is. I'll be very curious about that one. And uh, another Another coating that they released is they call their CarPro G-Force. So it's a hydrophobic glass coating. And that one too is based on D-Quartz Nano Diamond technology. So it's going to have a bit of that, um, how do they call that? The Functionalized Detonation Nano Diamond Powder. Wow, say that a few times. Uh, and so it'll be interesting. What the, it's cool about this one is that the hydrophobic properties will even be present at speeds below 50 kilometers an hour or 30 miles an hour. So we all know with many glass coatings, uh, they're only very efficient when you're um, going at speeds of over 35 to 40 miles per hour. Uh, and so on this one, 30 miles per hour, it should be still hydrophobic. So again, I'll be very interested to know. Um, it's a single layer application, two layers if you're not polishing your glass. So if you're not prepping properly, uh, two coats, but of course, like anything, prep the surface, guys. So do a wash, do some decontamination with a clay, um, machine polish the surface, use a glass polish. Carpro has a great one. It's called Seri Glass. They even have their rayon glass polishing pad. So uh, don't forget, glass is porous when viewed through a microscope. So it has hills, hills and valleys, just like your paint, and it can accumulate contamination. So you want to decontaminate all that. And once you're done polishing, of course, use an IPA paint prep spray like Carpro Eraser, Gion Prep, whatever you guys want, uh, or an isopropyl alcohol mix that is homemade. Wipe the surface free of any polishing oils and residue, and then you're going to create a perfect surface for the coating to bond to, and that's how you're going to get better performance and better durability. The same goes for paint, right? Paint coatings. Um, again, this one, you're, they asked to keep the surface dry for four hours and to not use your wipers for 24 hours. Uh, there's no claims on durability, except they talk about all year durability. So I'm guessing 12 months, but there's no official claim on that for now. Uh, in uh, fourth, who do we have? Yes, Gion. So they did a few cool things. Uh, first of all, they unveiled something that has never been done in the industry before, and it's the release of their entire Gion Purify line. What is that? Well, we don't have much details yet because they only had um, a little few social media clips, but they promised that those are products that are meant to clean, protect, and maintain. They're going to remove and prevent bacteria, microbes, and fungi. It's going to remove odors and unwanted smells. It's based entirely on natural components uh, in science. It's safe on every surface. Unique technology used for the first time in the automotive industry. I'm very curious because Gion is a top tier brand. So I'm uh, looking forward to seeing uh, those products in person and to testing them because they never come out with stuff for no reason. It's always because they did a lot of R&D. Uh, and again, they're, they're such a good brand. I'll be curious to know. Uh, another cool thing that they did, some new sprayers and spray bottles. Um, so now they're going to all come the uh, spray bottles mounted with the sprayers directly from the factory. And they have reinforced bottoms for more safety during shipping. Another cool thing, they're 100% recyclable bottles. They have new bold and bright uh, labels now with increased letter size as if that was needed. They already had some of the best bottles in the industry, the best packaging, the best presentation. They look so sleek. Uh, the products that I have on my shelves, anything from Gion is top notch. So they just stepped that up a notch even more. Uh, and to make things even better, their labels are water and chemical proof. And also they color coordinated their line for it to be not only good looking on your shelves, but for also quick and easy um, visualization of what you need. So for example, all their exterior cleaning and maintenance products will now come in a semi-transparent Gion blue bottle. Their wheel and tire products will come in black bottles. All their interior leather and fabric pro products will come in white bottles. All their glass products will come in fully transparent bottles. And uh, the Gion wet coat, that's kind of their special flagship product in the sprays, that will remain in its bright orange bottle that we all know and love. So lots of cool new things from Gion and I'll be curious to, to see all that stuff in person. 
Uh, number five, Griot's Garage, another very good company. Um, so what did they come out with this year? They have some super concentrated car wash pods. So kind of those little packets as if you were using some Tide Pods in your uh, laundry, um, in your washing machine, or those pods that we use sometimes in the um, dishwasher, those kinds of things. So I, I think it had been done many, many years ago by another brand. I just can't remember who. Um, don't quote me on that, but anyhow, so it's still something semi new that they're bringing to market. Uh, I'll be curious to know, are you guys interested in that? So what those car wash pods are basically, uh, it's gonna be your car shampoo, but in a form of a pod, so a little packet. Uh, you're gonna put that into your wash bucket before your wash process, so a few minutes before, because it needs time to dissolve in your solution. Then you activate it with your pressure washer uh, or your garden hose and you're good to go. So what they say for this is you're gonna put one pod can go up to four gallons uh, of water. It's preferable to use warm water to help speed up that uh, dissolving thing. Uh, and so they're doing that so you don't have any guesses to make with dilution. I've never had issues with dilution. I have measuring cups. I just pour the quantity I need, put that in the wash bucket. But is that easier? I don't know. What's gonna be the most important though, is it a quality car shampoo? So I think we're gonna find out by testing. Uh, the pods can be used in a bucket. They also talk about it can be used in a foam cannon or a foaming pump sprayer uh, and they're pH neutral supposed to have a great scent as well so I'll be very curious what do you guys think are uh, car wash pods something of interest to you um, the uh, next cool thing, they revealed a foaming glass cleaner. Their regular glass cleaner is already very good. So this one here is gonna have a foaming uh, type product and trigger. So it's ammonia free, obviously. So it's tin safe, it's dye free, streak free. It's gonna remove bugs, road grime and smoke film as well. So I was kind of like really smoke film because that's really hard. And sometimes you need to use degreasers like dishwashing liquid to help remove a little a bit of that grime initially. And then you finish off with the glass cleaner. So it'll be interesting. Uh, another thing, they won an award for this, it's called Stinky Be Gone. Basically, they're air fresheners that come in five different scents. Uh, cherry, tropical, JDM squash, uh, light em up, masculine scent, uh, and a leather scent. So basically, it's a spray to encapsulate odors and replace those odors with a fresh scent of your choice. It's gonna include three unscented wafers, so you control the scent strength by reapplying as necessary. So you can take that wafer, spray a bit on there, you either put it on your mirror, or if you wanna hide it somewhere, you can put it under your seats, for example, and have that or you can spray it on your carpets and upholstery so I'll be looking forward to that because um, I think that could be something cool we're always looking for scents uh, that uh, will give you a different feel right in your vehicle but also how long are they gonna last that's one thing I'm gonna be looking forward to test uh, and last but not least for Griot's Garage, they unveiled a ceramic rinseless wash. So ideal for maintaining ceramic base layers. It's gonna boost water beating according to them, self-cleaning properties and the gloss. So I'll be curious. There's a lot of good, good rinseless washes that have come up in the past years. If I look at PNS, absolute, fantastic, DIY detail, rinseless wash, amazing, McKee's N914. So it's not only Optimum No Rinse that is like king of the pack because they were some of the early rinseless washes or probably the originators of that in the detailing industry uh, many, many years ago at this point, over well over a decade ago. Uh, and so ONR, by the way, or Optimum No Rinse is at its version five formulation. Uh, so a slicker compared to the previous version number four, which wasn't as slick. But again, there are many, many competitors now that are producing good quality rinseless washes. So the ceramic infused one from Griot's Garage is gonna be one uh, that I'll be looking forward to test. Uh, next brand, number six, Auto Fiber. So they have many microfiber quality products. I love their Scrub Ninja pads that are good for interior cleanings of many surfaces. They're still um, uh, very light to use, right? Uh, they also made a collaboration with the Rag Company uh, from for their uh, Pearl Pucks, their ceramic coating applicators. So they're, um, yeah, they're very well known in the industry. So what they released this time is what they call a roll o rags So it's basically a roll of microfiber towels that are detachable and they come in a roll of how many? 30 towels per roll. They're 12 by 12 in size for 20 USD. So that's the asking price. They're gonna be available in black, blue, gray, or red colors, 260 GSM. They're an 80-20 blend from China, so Chinese sourced. Uh, and uh, they're a terry material, so they're the uh, the smaller, like they're a replacement for the traditional uh, blue shop towel. So a few brands released kind of those microfiber towels on a roll. We'll talk about that later in this video. So I'll be curious, I think it's a cool addition. You can put them on a rack somewhere or on a, uh, on a roll distributor somewhere in your shop or garage, and you have easy, quick access to those microfiber towels. Number seven, um, 
Coke Chemie or Kochemi. They are from Germany, so they unveiled uh, GFX, so a bit before SEMA, uh, but let's say the big unveiling was at SEMA. So it's their Gentle Snow Foam, but Christmas Limited Edition scent. That's why they call it GFX instead of GSF for the Gentle Snow Foam. That's the cherry scented regular version. I'm really looking forward to smelling that and testing that because uh, anybody who has tried it up to now says it's bonkers good. So it's like, I think Anthony from the Rag Company um, said it's as if Christmas had puked in the bottle and that's the kind of scent but in a good way so apparently it smells amazing so and GSF is already a fantastic snow foam and uh, car shampoo for the bucket so you can use it in both ways so I'll be curious to testing that um, they also have something new it's called the reactivation shampoo or RS in their code basically it's a descaling soap for ceramic coatings it's acidic based uh, removes lime scale and salt it has a pH of 1 Ooh, that is pretty low on the pH scale. Uh, and it's a 1 to 200 dilution in your bucket, 1 to 30 dilution in your foam cannon. So super concentrated and it's going to help to, well, again, remove any minerals that are clogging the top uh, pores of your ceramic coating and uh, hopefully uh, restore or rejuvenate your coating's initial properties. So uh, kind of like what CarPro Descale is doing, so that acidic level pH to remove any mineral deposits or water spots. So I'll be interested, very interested, to see how that uh, Koshemi RS or reactive shampoo does. Uh, number eight, Stoner Car Care. So they produce my favorite glass cleaner, the Invisible Glass, uh, but they also revealed a few different products this year in their Stoner Car Care brand. And one of them at SEMA that they unveiled is their new iron remover and wheel cleaner. Now, it is very hard to innovate in the iron removing space because all the brands, the majority of them have been able to do is kind of mask the scent of the TGA. So that's the active ingredient in all iron removers that has that uh, change of color to purple, right? but it smells like rotten eggs. There is no circumventing that. That's how the tech works, unfortunately. So the only thing they can do is try to mask a bit of that odor uh, with other scented molecules or uh, products inside there. So what Stoner did, and it's patent pending at this point, is they were able to change the formulation completely. So they have uh, a different active ingredient. It's not TGA anymore, and it sprays on blue and it turns orange when it reacts on the surface. The, um, the demo was quite cool. It's a pH balanced formula and you can use it both on painted surfaces and on your wheels. So I'll be very intrigued. Uh, the people who have smelled it in person commented that, yep, it does not smell like rotten eggs. So again, they're not using that TGA, the classic um, active ingredient from all iron removers. They have something totally different. Now I heard there's another brand somewhere else working on a similar type innovation with something different. So I'll be curious to see how they actually uh, are in person. And obviously, does it still work well uh, at doing its job, which is iron removal? I don't want to sacrifice odor for performance. So performance is always number one for me. If it doesn't smell, fantastic. But if it has poor performance and it doesn't smell, yeah, I don't want it on my shelves. So I'll be curious about that one. Uh, number nine, ego. So if I'm looking uh, to my right there, I have my Ego blower. I love blowers to dry vehicles at the end, especially when you have a wax, a sealant, or a ceramic coating. Those hydrophobic properties mean that the water just flies off the car. And to accelerate uh, the speed of drying when you're done washing your car, you use a car dryer or a leaf blower. And I like the Ego blowers because they're cordless, battery operated. You don't have to have the hassle to like lug them around, plug the power cord and have the, the whole tubing and all that stuff. It's one unit. You pick it up, use it, set it down, recharge the battery. That's it. You're good to go. Uh, so an Ego has been one of the leaders in that kind of an industry. So they're coming out with two amazing products that hopefully I'll get my hand on as soon as they're released. Um, I think I put my pre-order on for one of them or both of them already. Anyways, uh, I, I want to have both. So the first one is the nine gallon wet and dry vac. So the special thing, obviously, it's fully cordless, so battery operated. It's going to have, though, the performance to match, even though it's battery powered. Like many years ago, when we heard battery powered, we knew that it was not as powerful as, cord, uh, as corded versions, right? But now they're changing the, uh, the game. So 110 CFM of suction power for a 100-inch lift. So definitely a lot of power. Uh, your runtime is going to be 60 minutes on eco mode, 30 minutes on high mode, and they have a turbo mode. You'll be able to do 20 minutes with that. Uh, and you're going to have a 56 volt, 5 amp hour battery. So you can use the Ego batteries that you already have at home or one. I don't know if it's going to be supplied. Don't quote me on that. I don't know if they're going to give you one in the kit, but they're likely going to have something available with batteries or just the tool itself. And it's going to have onboard storage for the hose and accessories and even a filter cleaning 
function so your filter doesn't get clogged. I saw a demo on the Car Supplies Warehouse, by the way, uh, website. Um, they're the Chicago Auto Pros um, counterpart, which distributes products in the US. Um, and yeah, they had demos of that vacuum and it seemed pretty, pretty cool. Uh, it looks good, looks futuristic, and it's going to be cordless. So their second thing that they're releasing, they call it the Ego Power Plus. It's a cordless pressure washer. What? And yes, not only for power, but you're going to have an independent source of water because you can bring a bucket if you want with distilled water. And there's going to be an intake hose that you can put in the bucket. So for mobile detailers out there, that is fantastic. Or even if you're, you're at your house, you don't have a water spigot somewhere near or you don't have access to water, you can bring your own bucket of water, put that intake tube in there. It's going to suck uh, up the water. It has a filter at the end. So obviously there's no particles that go through. And uh, it's a 100% cordless battery operated pressure washer. So you're going to have three levels of power once again, eco, high and turbo. Uh, the max turbo is 3200 PSI. That's way too much to wash cars. So you're probably going to use either the eco or the medium modes, which I don't know. I didn't see the numbers, but it's likely going to be anywhere between 1000 to 2000 PSI, which is the sweet spot to wash cars. Uh, you're going to get two supplied ego batteries with it. Uh, you're going to get 60 minutes runtime with the two included six amp hours arc lithium batteries. Uh, and again, the eco high and turbo modes. Uh, you're going to have an intake line to take water from the bucket. Man, I'm looking forward to it. It looks crazy good. It's going to have the ego quality that we're expecting. And of course, one of the best uh, battery technologies out there for cordless apparatuses. So I think they, I don't know if they were purchased by Flex or if Ego has Flex or if Flex purchased Ego. Basically, they seem to do a lot of partnerships uh, together. So I'm looking forward because there are two good brands that I really enjoy. So um, yeah, those are two great products that Ego is releasing. Number 10 uh, from PNS. How can we forget? So the brothers, Bob Phillips and Dave Phillips, work closely together. So Bob is more like the uh, brains behind the business aspect and marketing, and Dave is the chemist. So they blend their own products, and they're releasing uh, the PNS Inspiration Radiance. So what is this? It's a coating maintenance wash. And what Dave mentioned, the chemist once again, is that it's a light stripping soap to revive coatings without damaging the coatings. Uh, and it's going to accentuate the properties of the coatings once you're done. You can use it in a bucket or a foam cannon, although in a foam cannon, don't expect it to foam too much. That's not its main thing. Um, it's not as foamy. So there's no wax or any protection in there. So no protection whatsoever, according to Dave once again. And it's going to basically reset the coating to its original properties. I'm guessing a bit kind of like what CarPro Reset does, right? Uh, reset is supposed to kind of remove that accumulated traffic film and uh, give you back the properties of your coating if you're using it regularly for regular maintenance washes. So the PNS Inspiration Radiance, I think it's in the double black Renny Doyle line, um, but that'll be very interesting. They already have their Pearl Shampoo uh, over there at PNS that works quite well. However, now Dave decided to do something very specific for ceramic coatings, hence why they're calling it their coating maintenance soap. So it'll be very interesting to test. And uh, number 11, last but not least, the rag company. Uh, so they also came out with a kind of roller rag kind of thing. They call it the rip and rag. So basically a roll of multiple microfiber towels, kind of like what auto fiber did, but this time uh, they're having how many? 80 towels. So auto fiber had 30 towels for 20 USD and the rag company is having 80 towels at a release price of 29 US dollars. So great bang for buck. Uh, they're using a bit higher quality towels in this one, uh, to my knowledge. So it's a 70-30 blend instead of an 80-20 blend like Auto Fiber. They're going to be 12, in, 12 by 12 in size. Uh, so perfect size, 180 GSM. And again, you're getting 80 towels in the, in the roll, low linting. And they're basically the best possible replacement. That was the objective of the rag company for the classic blue shop towels that many mechanics use uh, and many people in the detailing industry as well. So you're going to be able to replace those by better quality microfiber towels. It's a Terry style, so you're going to have a longer pile on one side, shorter pile on the other. Uh, for those who are used to the uh, um, Rag Company Edgeless 245 towels, they're kind of like the same thing, uh, but a bit thinner compared to those. And they're going to have one color at launch. It's the ice gray color. Uh, and you can wash and reuse the towels, obviously, just like Auto Fiber. So uh, both Auto Fiber and the Rag Company, tremendous, tremendous quality for their um, microfiber towels. But here they're coming out with innovative ways of using them. So tear away towels on a roll, easily accessible. And the price per towel is super cheap and you're still getting some quality towels. So very inexpensive. And I think uh, those will be quite a good hit, especially perhaps on the professional side. I don't know if you guys at home, if you're uh, DIYers and Weekend Warriors, are you interested in products like that? 
So again, guys, I'll leave links to all the tools, products, and equipment in the description under the video for you guys to check them out. Also, what is the product that you're most interested about? Again, we spoke about Rupes, Meguiar's, CarPro, uh, Gion, uh, Griot's Garage, Autofiber, Koshemi, Stone Care, uh, Stoner Car Care, Ego, PNS, and the Rag Company. Uh, which one of those? Is there any particular product that you absolutely want me to see, uh, review, and test in the future? Uh, let me know. And is there any new product from a brand that I perhaps did not talk about that you're really curious and uh, want me to look into, drop a comment in the comment section. So I hope you enjoyed this, guys. A lot of research went into this. Uh, if you enjoy my videos, smash the thumbs up and click on it at the bottom of this video. It really helps the YouTube algorithm kind of promote my videos to others who might not know my channel. And uh, yeah, let's make this community even bigger and better. And always, I love sharing my knowledge and my passion for detailing with you guys to go out there and enjoy detailing your vehicles because it is so cool. It's a soothing experience. And I just still, after 26 years of detail, I still appreciate every minute of it. So thanks for being there. Thanks for watching. And in the meantime, don't forget, keep it tight, keep it clean, and I'll see you on the next one.